beautiful, unique part of Kyrgyzstan in the southeast corner, where we're basically surrounded by Tajikistan on three sides. And people would call this like the Patagonia um, of Central Asia. And yeah, I'm just elated, I'm excited. You know, it's been a dream of mine for so many years uh, to explore a little bit more of Central Asia. And this first trip to Kyrgyzstan is really just the beginning. And I cannot wait to get up into these hills uh, and start exploring more. And so we're off. This village borders the very wilderness that I've been gearing up to explore. There's no extra transportation needed to start our journey. All we have to do is walk right out of town. Starting off, we pass fellow villagers carrying their things on donkeys just like us. But after a strong morning of hiking, the passers-by thin out and I begin to find myself truly alone on the trail. Okay, this is our first real day of trekking, first real day of moving here in southern Kyrgyzstan. And already the landscape is totally different than I could have expected. It's dry, it's hot, it feels like we're just in some kind of high altitude desert. And the sun is ruthless, but still we're trekking on. Uh, this is a beautiful part of the world and I can't wait till we get a little higher. We're gonna get some vistas, hopefully some snow-capped peaks. <laughs> There's not a cloud in the sky today and the sun is pounding down on us. I wear long sleeves to avoid sunburn, but I'm cooking under the layers. So it's refreshing to find some mist rising out of a river I'm trekking beside, wetting my face for a moment of relief. Sasha stops us for a quick afternoon picnic to recharge with fresh fruits, meats and cheeses on this patch of grass beside the water. you can find a natural spring just out of the side of the mountain. Fresh, clean, ice cold water. And that is such a welcome thing in this southern Kyrgyz heat that we're fighting through today. As the day progresses, we approach steeper hillsides finally stumbling upon a huge mountain pass for the first real glimpse of the epic nature that's in store for us. Feels as though we're passing through the jaws of a mountain. These huge veins of rock, its jagged teeth, welcoming Sasha and I into the adventure ahead. This is where we leave traditional hiking behind in exchange for something much more raw, much more challenging. Sasha brings me along another stream, pointing out the wildlife around us. And ahead, we find camp for the night. A small cluster of tents awaiting our arrival. Before heading to bed, Sasha and I have a chance to catch up and get to know each other. When uh, I was four years old, mm -hmm. I start uh, go to the tundra with my parents. Wow. Uh, it's possible 
to say is that it was my the first contact with the nature, wild nature. When I was uh, 15, 15 years old, we with my parents removed to the Bishkek because my parents were born here. Okay. And now the Kyrgyzstan is my second the homeland. If you know, then Kyrgyzstan more than uh, mm, ninety. Two percent mm -hmm. occupied by mountains. Ninety-two percent. Ninety-two percent. Really? Percent, yeah. In Kyrgyzstan, uh, one thousand nine hundred twenty-three lakes, various region. One thousand nine hundred twenty-three lakes. Ten lakes, wow. various regions, and so on. That is why it's uh, a lot of the possibilities, and uh, not enough the one uh, life, you right. want us to visit and to see the something. Yeah. Uh, uh, everything, sorry. So you've had more than 25 years as a mountain and guiding expert. Um, could you ever imagine going back to working in some office somewhere? No. No? I think that it's enough for me as a worker in the office. Yeah. It is not, it not, it is not my profit, no. <laughs> unfortunately. Right. I prefer the nature yeah and uh, sleeping in the tents it's beautiful right here's the noise of the river i love the noise <laughs> of the river. this is your new office yeah for 25 plus exactly. years exactly <laughs> on this first night out in the turkestan circle i'm thankful to be out of the city i'm quietly taking in the cliffs and the peaks around me giving perspective of just how small i am how small my problems back in urban society really are. This is where I come to let it all go. Early morning starts with a walk upstream. Trekking along the creeks and the rivers in Kyrgyzstan helps to find the paths of least resistance up and over these mountains. The rushing sound puts my mind at ease, and having fresh water to drink at any moment is liberating. The water flows directly off these mountains around us and needs no filter for consumption. Turkestan range. Yesterday was mostly flat. Today couldn't be any different. So today's path is quite ruthless. It's quite steep heading up here. No, yeah, it's uh, steep, especially from the another side. Yeah. When we go and down. Okay. This is gorgeous territory, though. It's gorgeous landscape. Ah, oh, very interesting and very beautiful. Yeah. Quite a special place. Our first serious objective is a high pass with a long, daunting approach. I pace myself carefully, saving up for the steep trail ahead. and I slow from fatigue, our donkey caravan catches up with us and we battle the mountains as a unit. Successfully crossing over mountains this large isn't about being fast. It's about finding a collective rhythm and moving safely with the knowledge that there's plenty of hiking left to do on the other side. This is our 
first big high pass here in Kyrgyzstan. And look behind me, the scenery is spectacular. We've got snow-capped peaks everywhere. We got an early start this morning. We got out ahead of the caravan. Then on those last few steps up towards this high pass, they caught right up to us and they carried on. And we're just needed to take a little break and enjoy this incredible view. Now we gotta go way down the other side, back into the valley for our camp tonight. And so our caravan pushes ahead, down a steep, winding set of switchbacks. I'll follow their lead after a moment or two, but for now, I wanna take in my surroundings. These mountains are really starting to put on a show. And as the clouds finally begin to appear overhead, I can see a fantastic display of the curves and colors in the rock around us. This part of Kyrgyzstan is just beautiful. And you know what? Sasha, my guide, he's 58 years young. <laughs> he is way up there. <laughs> he is just crushing me. Uh, so my ego is a little bruised, but uh, he's breaking great trail and I just gotta try to stay up with him. But every now and then you gotta stop and enjoy the scenery. There's so much to take in. The light of early day dances along the mountainsides, shifting quickly to reveal new patterns in topography. And far below, a different sort of movement. These sheep belong to semi-nomadic herdsmen. In the summer, they come here to the mountains to let their animals graze on fresh grass. And in the winter, they return to their villages. From a distance, these herds take on a more singular shape, a throng of different shades flowing over the terrain. With the thaw of the Kyrgyzstan summer, this land has just become accessible. Nomadic farmers frequently make treks similar to mine, but with hundreds of animals to tend to. They watch from the mountaintops as their animals devour the grass below. Six hundred sheep. Uh, yeah, sheep. <laughs> Six hundred sheep. Yeah, only here. And how long does he live here? Сколько вы здесь? Ну, два месяца. Два месяца. Two months. Two months up here would change you. The wind howls, the sun scorches. As I spend more time in this wilderness, which I'm calling home this week, the rewards become just as clear as the challenges. Another high pass awaits us this morning. A struggle to reach, but well worth it. This is some world-class hiking. All the snow-capped peaks here are just exposed to us. It is remarkable. It is such beautiful trekking. The scenery, 
The trail is well marked. It's just, uh, it's a great place to be. And Sasha, again, he's super fit. He's way up ahead of me somewhere. I gotta go catch up. We're gonna have lunch, I think. And yeah, just more epic, epic walking. This part of the world is spectacular. rather than eating on the move. This makes for an intimate experience of the Kyrgyz environment. Every now and then we pass farmers and travelers who Sasha greets with sincerity and charm. He's the perfect pilot for a journey like this. A man of few words. His balanced temperament is appreciated against this enormous landscape. We pass through valley farmland, a rare break from the steep peaks we've traversed for the last two days. It's refreshing to see so far ahead as our perspective widens but only for a moment, as we're soon tracing along a river gorge. The mountains of Kyrgyzstan are some of the tallest in the world this far north, and as the snowpack melts this summer, the water picks up tremendous speed and power. Just a bit further downstream, the calm flow turns to rapids. Evidence of its danger is clearly visible. Another day of trekking is in the books. Our friendly porters greet me with smiles at camp. Now it's time to relax. We're in a special part of the world, and the mountains are remarkable. There's two things, two things I love about trekking. One is beautiful landscapes and beautiful scenery. Of course, we all love to see you know, snow-capped peaks and beautiful mountains and all this kind of stuff. But the thing that does it for me, the second thing, is that feeling of, oh my God, we are out there and there's no coming back. And, and you know, you don't get that in a lot of countries. You know, you can travel around in Southeast Asia maybe and there's always people around, but out here, you're really out there. Like, the wilderness element is incredible. You know, we, we, we see a couple herdsmen every now and then, but we're really out there. And when you're really out there and you're seeing beautiful scenery and you're enjoying the trek is, uh, well, I mean, what more could you ask for? And oh my God, the deeper we get into this trek, the more days we put behind us, the more walking we get done, the more beautiful this part of the world becomes. Kyrgyzstan is landlocked. Actually, it's further from the ocean than any other country in the world. And with over 90% of it covered in mountains, you might expect everywhere to look somewhat similar. But no, the Turkestan circle is transforming many times a day right before our eyes, kilometer by kilometer. This means hard work for our caravan. So when things wind down at camp, our porters tend to the pack animals, repairing horseshoes and rearranging gear. Meanwhile, I meet with Sasha and his team to review the travels ahead. Every day will become tougher, colder and longer as we approach Aktubek Pass our highest objective on the Turkestan circle. These meetings keep everyone on the same page and morale high.
just when I think the mountains can't get any bigger, they do. Gushing riverbeds give way to lush, grassy fields, only to morph into dry, rocky trail around the next bend. The amount of climatic zones we're witnessing along this trek is incredible. It is, man, but the more out in the wild I am, the more just off the grid, the happier I seem to be. And when you're surrounded by beautiful mountains in every direction and you can sleep and hear the roar of a river next to you, it's just peaceful. It just cleans your soul of all the garbage that society just packs in. Um, being out in nature is amazing. It's beautiful. And uh, it refreshes, it re-cleanses the mind, the body, and the soul so that we can come back to city life, hopefully a better person, and hopefully able to deal with more crap. Sasha and I are headed towards a notably different cluster of peaks, characterized by wild shapes and ridgelines. And off in the distance, I begin to see the snow-capped mountains we'll soon be wandering through. The trail only gets steeper from here. getting deep into the Turkestan circle at this point. So it's a bit of a surprise to find a shelter and a pen for livestock just ahead. This shelter is used seasonally, in the summer months, by people from the villages like the one we met Sasha in just before our journey. Items like food and bedding are left behind, maybe to return to, maybe to never see again. Donkey ears hang from the ceiling. Pelts lay around the structure. It makes for the perfect stopover for our own animals as we climb non-stop throughout the morning. around us is growing in size with each kilometer. I feel incredibly small amongst this colossal landscape. The grass beneath my feet is giving way to rocky earth as we gain altitude. These stones have fallen off the massive scree slopes nearby. I feel a magnetic pull towards them. The desire to live amongst this epic nature is what brought me to the wilds of Kyrgyzstan. And now that I'm here, I can't help my craving to climb up and on top of it all. To hop off the trail and experience the raw, untamed Turkestan circle. I stop below the mountain before me, contemplating the risks and rewards. But it's no question. The challenge is calling. My excitement takes over. It's time to climb. The climb is treacherous. A near vertical wall made up of loose rock. I expect every foothold to fall out from below me. this stage in the climb, it would be too difficult and too dangerous to go down. There's only one way to go, and that is up. Somehow, after a long, careful ascent, I emerge safely on the summit.
walked towards the horn of the mountain, out of breath and buzzing with adrenaline. It's hard to believe I made it without injury. My reward is a breathtaking 360 degree view of the Turkestan mountains. I feel like I'm on top of the world. Tubac Pass. At 4,185 meters, it's the highest point on our journey around the Turkestan Circle. And crossing over it will be no easy task. It looks pretty, uh, it's gonna get cold today, isn't it? No, at least colder than yesterday. <laughs> colder than yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Much colder than yesterday. Nothing but scree in every direction. No trees, no soil, no water. The cold gusts of wind picking up on our ascent seem like they've whisked it all away. The further we push, the closer we get to the top of Aktubak Pass, the harder the wind blows. I'm fighting it with every step. Shadows of the clouds overhead whip by. At this altitude, we are moving slowly, and it's not long before our porters, pack animals, and guides catch up to us. I'm surprised at how little affected they are by the conditions. Finally, we approach the summit of Aktubak Pass, the crux of the Turkestan Circle, and by far the windiest point of all. I'm hiding from the wind! Sasha and I just made it up to the top of Aktubak Peak, which is about 4,380 meters above sea level, and it actually marks the highest point of our trek in these Turkestan mountains here in southern Kyrgyzstan. And uh, it's amazing. We've just been trekking up the scree all day long, and our caravan of donkeys and horses have been right behind us. And it's absolutely incredible uh, to be up at this altitude and to be surrounded by such beautiful mountains in every direction. I've just been so impressed with the nature that's on display here in Kyrgyzstan. And uh, you just have to stop and look around and remind yourself you're in one of the most beautiful places in the world. And then that just powers you to keep on moving. But it's getting windy now and it's getting cold, so I'm on my way down. just come off the high pass. It's still windy, but so much warmer down here. And that's where we're headed. We're going right down into that valley. We only have a few more days left of trekking. We're getting there. Finally, we're back into the river valleys, dotted with trees and plant life, the packs of livestock roaming freely. I'm embraced by the soft ground below my feet, the still, fresh air, the sun on my back. What felt so wild and foreign to me only a few days ago has come to feel like home dwarfed by the jagged peaks behind the Aktubak Pass. Coming off its slopes and back into this fertile land is a cause for celebration. No more ducking my head to fight the wind. Now I can take my time and really absorb my impossibly beautiful surroundings.
last few days of the Turkestan Circle are a dream. Waking up, cradled in these mountains, I never want to leave. pack up for the journey home. I'm entirely grateful for their hard work. Sasha shows me the way home, following streams and rivers back down to the village where we started from. His warmth and hospitality will be dearly missed. One of the things I like to talk about is how we all define adventure. And the way I like to define adventure is, um, you know, having some kind of action or some kind of journey which you have no control over. And, you know, giving up control, giving up that desire to manufacture experiences, giving up that need to know what's going to happen next um, is very, very beautiful. And, you know, when you're out here in the wilds of Kyrgyzstan, you really have no control. You have no control over what's going to happen to you next. You have no control over what Mother Nature is going to do to you. You have no control over your guides. You've got no control over the wild animals or domesticated animals uh, in your vicinity. And it's one of the reasons why I love coming out to the mountains or coming out into nature is just because it's nice to give up the control. You know, when you're in the city, you're on a schedule, you've got people to meet, you've got phone calls to reply to, emails to reply to. Everything has this kind of predictable rhythm to it. Um, but out here, you have no idea what's going to happen to you next. And it's refreshing. And I think it's cleansing. Uh, and it's beautiful. And you know, when you come out here into nature, it's not about hiding from the problems of the city. Um, it's about cleansing yourself from the city and refreshing yourself so that you can go back, hopefully a better person uh, and a more calm person and a more patient person. Because what happens to you out here tends to be much more serious than what happens to you in the city. So with that, um, I say goodbye to Kyrgyzstan and uh, I say goodbye to the friendships we've made here and, uh, and hopefully there'll be a chance to come back soon.